So welcome everybody. Uh, I would like to introduce, my name is Alice hawkinson Todd. I'm working for the Cute Company. I would like to introduce our next presenter, Eric Bader, who is uh, working for uh, ASRI and will talk about uh, applying uh, special analytics to unlock the power of your data. Uh, if you would like to join. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elise. Well, welcome. Uh, hope it was a good lunch. Um, we'll try to keep you awake uh, for the next uh, 50 minutes or so. So, uh, my name is Eric Bader. I work for a company called Esri. I'm product manager of our uh, developer technologies. I'm going to talk about something that's very uh, important to the owner of our company, and it's um, about um, applying spatial analytics uh, in, in our world today um, with the business data that's around. So um, here's our agenda. So I will just um, explain who we are, uh, what we do, and why we do it, and what spatial analysis is uh, in our world, um, how, why it's important, and how it's applied. And specifically, I'll be talking about how it's applied um, for uh, cute developers who build applications and embed them into existing applications to bring our um, spatial toolkit uh, into their applications. So a little bit about who we are. We're Esri. Uh, did I say California already? I probably did, because I was going to give a t-shirt for somebody who knew where Esri was headquartered. Uh, but there's two t-shirts up there, so if the first two people that can come get them, they're there. Um, so we build a highly scientific, um, powerful mapping and um, geospatial analytics uh, platform. It's not just a product, it's a set of products, but it's a platform. And um, we are in 100 uh, uh, offices around the world in 67 countries. We have um, many distributors, and that continues to grow. We've been in business for over 40 years, uh, and so we've been very steady. So uh, just a few numbers uh, about Esri. Um, we're in 75% of the Fortune 500 companies. Uh, we have uh, closer to, by now, 400,000 organizations that employ our, our platform and our technology, uh, or at least use on-premise or in the cloud uh, or on our desktops. Um, and we're, um, a, we have about 20,000 attendees every year to come to three main um, events uh, that we have, two in San, one in San Diego, one in Palm Springs, and then a developer conference here in Europe that's happening in this facility in two weeks. So come on back in two weeks if you like this facility and you'll learn all about developer at Esri. Um, so every day we get about a billion hits to our mapping platform that's in the cloud. That's um, ArcGIS.com. Call it ArcGIS Online. Uh, we have uh, a number of contributors, uh, 100 and about 150,000 people contribute every day to our platform. They contribute maps, create maps there. They take their own data. They create their own data layers, their spatial data layers. Um, and um, there are about, um, you know, we, we keep adding more and more every day. So um, it's a pretty significant platform, uh, and it's highly um, scientific geospatial analytics that people do with our maps and the data that, that we provide and the data that they provide um, also to the community. So speaking of community, that's what Esri serves, is the community around the world. And our, our customers um, are uh, heavily involved in conservation efforts. So a lot of our a lot of the, the reasons why we do what we do is to support the conservation um, of and, and natural resources around the world, keep the world a better place, a more su sustainable planet. Um, we also are very heavily in, involved in humanitarian efforts around the world. Lots of disasters that have happened over the last year. Esri Technology is there to um, um, support um, relocation of people, um, helping people get to where they need to go and helping to, to um, bring relief uh, to people who are affected in those areas. And then for business customers, uh, we provide our, our spatial analytical tools to help them run their businesses much more efficiently. Uh, and in education, um, our owner has donated a la in the last three years a billion dollars worth of software to all educational institutions in the United States. Um, and it's very important that he, um, for us to uh, train 
people to understand from an early age how geography matters and how to scientifically approach geography to solve uh, many of the world's problems that we have today, whether they're cultural, whether they're um, physical, uh, environmental, and so forth. So what, do our, what does our platform do? What, what, what does the technology do that, that we provide? It's, it's used in operational intelligence, where you have agencies that need to track situations or operations, whether that be um, mail delivery um, packages, um, whether that be um, emergency response um, situations where um, things are moving all the time, you need to track assets immediately, um, our technology is used in there. Um, situational awareness, like I said, if there's a mission, mission planning, mission operations, whether it's in the field, whether it's disconnected, whether it's in an ops center, um, where it's connected and there are people that need to make decisions immediately, that geospatial um, aspect to the data that's moving and constantly changing uh, is, is provided in those locations. Location strategy are, are technologies used to help businesses find where to locate their stores, their markets, uh, where they need to target their markets. Um, uh, our technology is used by a company called FedEx in, in the United States and around the world to help them um, deliver packages on time within the minute um, all over the world. And then um, really important and dear to the heart of our, our CEO um, and our owner um, is uh, the ability to use our technology to support smarter cities, more efficient cities to bring utility um, operations to serve the community better, to allow um, collaboration of citizens to contribute uh, to the uh, transparency of the government uh, in kind of social media and, and crowdsourcing efforts. Um, that's, that's kind of uh, what our technology is used for. And what can it really do? So as developers, uh, we want to build applications that actually meet these market needs, right, and help our businesses and help our organizations run more efficiently and smarter, right? So what does that, what does that do? So as we build a platform called ArcGIS, and it lives in the cloud, it lives on premise, you can take the, the cloud, bring it into your environment, but it also lives on devices, desktops, it produces data, it consumes data, it manages data, and it applies uh, uh, hundreds and hundreds of spatial analytical tools to that data to help make decisions. And that's kind of the core of what we're gonna be talking about uh, today. So why is Esri at a CUTE conference? Well, Esri's a contributor to the to uh, the CUTE community. So we provide a plugin uh, that provides our 12, at least 12 of our hundreds of base maps um, to uh, the CUTE location geoservices plugin. So we're, we're yet another provider in that plugin. So you can locate addresses uh, through this plugin and um, find data by address or by coordinates, find addresses. Um, and you can also solve routes as well, point-to-point -point routing and get the directions from there. Um, we do provide that as a connected open source uh, uh, provider, our technology there, but we also provide a, 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 an SDK for the Qt platform that gives the full power of ArcGIS to you, the developer, to embed our technology into your applications. And uh, this right here is just a, just a a few highlights of what that SDK provides. Um, it provides you know, scientific mapping and data visualization in both the 2D and 3D space. Um, and again, the core of what the differentiator is uh, with this particular SDK is that it brings some, some in interesting analytical tools and APIs, and we're, these are what we're gonna talk about today, um, to, uh, the Qt, for the Qt developer for Qt applications. It provides uh, tools for um, having client applications manage data on the client in a disconnected environment and also synchronize with the cloud um, where you have back-end data on the back-end to manage your data uh, geospatially and its attributes as well. Um, lots of tools and, and APIs to do geo-searching uh, by address, by coordinates, um, reverse geocoding and batch geocoding. Um, of course, routing, very important analytical capability to solve routes over a, a network, and uh, also 
um, strong APIs for doing your GIS work offline or online, on devices, on laptops, in browsers, uh, but our Qt SDK is intended for building native applications, whether they're Windows, Linux, Mac OS, iOS, Android devices. So as a Qt developer, you'd be thinking, well, what does this really look like for me to actually build, use a mapping SDK? So um, let me show you real quick um, where our landing page is. So it's at developers.arcjs.com slash cute. So here you can download the SDK for free and get all its capabilities and be able to connect to the cloud, uh, ArcGIS's cloud, put your data in there, consume it, work with it. Um, and uh, here's our SDK com um, components here with respect to guide documentation, API reference, We've got a number of samples that we hold that we share in GitHub today, um, and um, you can take that code and do what you need to um, with it, um, and then um, also C++ samples and QML samples, um, and then we have a, a, a GeoNet forum which allows our customers um, to interact with our development team, and we monitor uh, this to cultivate community uh, for spatial developers um, for the Qt platform. So. That's just a quick um, picture of the SDK and how you can access it and where you get it. Um, so we're talking about spatial analysis and its criticality uh, for your uh, uh, workflows and your organization and for your data. Um, and so why, why is spatial analysis so important? Well, obviously it helps us to understand the differences between places across a geographic plane, right? It helps us answer questions, um, maybe political questions. Why are things different over here than they are over here? And then if you look at it spatially, you see, oh, well, there's lots of mountain chains between these two regions, isolates people, um, maybe it's higher elevation, lower elevation. So spatial an analysis tells us about place. It helps us determine relationships as to why things are um, maybe correlated across a geographic plane. Um, it helps us to de detect patterns, patterns in, over time and patterns of either behavior or how um, uh, the, the weather is actually behaving in certain parts on a regular basis. And that helps us to be able to store that information and then model it to make predictive analytics uh, down the, down the road so that we can better be prepared for um, things that are going to happen uh, later on. Spatial analytics, a recent report came out that it has quite uh, an impact on our, on, our, on our economy, right? The economic impact uh, is pretty significant as you can imagine, right? Um, I like the social benefits at the bottom there. Emergency response times reduced by 20% worldwide. So, you know, spatial analysis saves lives, basically. Um, CO2 emissions, which is very important to keep an eye on to, to keep our planet um, sustainable. Um, they've been reduced last year, according to this report by Alpha Beta, um, you know, by about 5% of the world's uh, total um, tons, million tons. 1686. Um, business benefits, obviously, um, because of digital mapping, a trillion dollars worth of uh, US dollars worth of business uh, was transacted. And um, these are just a few from this report that's linked in, in, this, uh, in this report, Alpha Beta Strategy and Economics. Um, time saved uh, for consumers who more efficiently do their shopping. Um, can get to stores or maybe not get to stores, stay uh, indoors and shop online, uh, saved uh, 283 billion. These are big numbers. Uh, so spatial anal analytics really matters e economically um, with respect to businesses, consumers, uh, and our society as a whole. Um, okay. So then we know it's important. Uh, we know um, how it how it impacts our lives. So how do we actually perform it? So what's needed, right? Um, obviously, data has a spatial component to it. Most any type of data does. So you need to start with that data that has a geographic component to it. And that data can be in many different 
formats, right? We all know data, lots of databases out there. There's uh, data stored in um, spreadsheets, CSV. Uh, there's data stored in open formats, such as, uh, you know, maybe geopackages, uh, which is a recent OGC specification for storing uh, geospatial information as a unit. Uh, but there are image files, too, that have intelligence to those files, geotiffs, georeferenced um, raster files, shape files that have attributes and shapes that you can plot on a map in a particular coordinate system. Um, KML is a very popular format as well, but data is available in any form. It's actually also open, so I'll show you a couple of those in a minute. Um, uh, open meaning, just like we have open source projects, we have open data projects as well. I'll show you a couple of those. So once you have the data and you have it in a storage format, what, how do you do spatial analysis? Well, you need APIs and tools to operate on that data intelligently, logically, with the ability for you to set those parameters to, exact, to, to figure out exactly how you want to perform your spatial analysis. And then, you know, equally as important as the others, is a way to present the results of the spatial analytics that you do. Right? You might see the results. I do this all the time where I'll see tables and numbers and I go, oh, I know what that means. But my management doesn't know what that means until I put it in a picture that they can understand. And so we need maps, right? Maps to show spatial analysis results. Sometimes we just need spatial tables and people just see uh, Excel spreadsheets as, as the summary of what that analysis is. But maps tell the story uh, and they're intelligent maps that you need to tell the story with. And, uh, and so that's very important. So now we know um, what we need to perform spatial analysis. How do we actually implement um, our goal for performing spatial analysis? Well, the simple and most powerful right now and probably the easiest to get to is visualization of your data. Visualization of your data based on attributes of the data that can actually tell a story about on a map spatially what's happening uh, and your mind actually performs spatial analysis, whether you're cognizant, it, cognizant of it or not. Um, we also implement uh, spatial analysis by comparing geospatial objects, right? These would be geometric operations, where you take land parcels and figure out which ones are in flood zones and how much of that flood zone exactly is that parcel located in. Is that insurable or not? Querying data. You can query spatial data to get spatial statistics and give those statistics back to you along with geometry that's aggregated that represents those summaries. Uh, we also implement analysis in, in complex uh, ways such as geoprocessing. And when I say geoprocessing, I mean where you're actually doing heavy duty um, algorithm analytics where you've written a Python script that actually takes data input, operates on another data set, and then outputs more physical data from that as a result. And you can chain these things together, uh, these, these algorithms um, that you can then execute and package and read uh, into your Qt applications. Uh, in, uh, spatial analysis is implemented across networks, not just transportation networks, but also um, maybe waterways, or maybe watersheds. Uh, it's, it's applied over uh, uh, networks that are utility networks of pipes and electrical lines uh, and water and sewer uh, lines as well. So we need analytics uh, and we have the tools to implement uh, analytics across those different types of networks. And of course, uh, we implement analysis via making calls to a web service on, over the wire. This is where there's a service that just exposes some basic interfaces, but it's doing the heavy duty analytics against data sets on a back end. Uh, and then you get the result, and that result can be a map or it can be data that you can overlay on a map. And we'll talk about each one of these. So here's a, let's, let's look at visualization first. How do you do spatial analysis just through visualization? Well, you have spatial data, and that spatial data has attributes. And you take that spatial data with its attributes and you plot it on a map. And you can take the d specific data uh, points within the uh, tabular data and use that to apply rendering. 
right? So you can style your maps based on, uh, in this case, this would be um, the uh, increased frequency of crashes, auto accidents within, um, within or, or in and around Miami, Florida, right? Um, you can take that data and, and style it with unique values for the data that's, that's seen spatially or class breaks. Population is usually uh, applied as a class break style across, so you can see um, different uh, ranges uh, with different symbology. Or temporal, right? So you can have a, 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 a time slider bar where your data changes over time and you can see that uh, dynamically change. So these are all visual ways to do spatial analysis. So as I mentioned here, in this picture that we're looking at, it's looking at the frequency of crashes over time. So the time is most recent time at the top of those columns. So you, you might look and see, well, where the blue is, the, the frequency has decreased drastically. So over time, we can see where in that time slice that decrease happened, or the increase in the red, where it looks like most of the red is toward the top. So over time, there's, there's a higher frequency of crashes in those areas. These are all examples of visual um, visual analysis, and you can get to this map, it's an interactive map, um, if you wanted to take a picture of that URL, you can get that, and these slides will be made available uh, later. So let me show you um, a few examples uh, in practical use here. Um, I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to my browser here we go. I'm going to show you a few places where you can get data that's open, that you don't pay for, but it's, um, it's made open source by authoritative organizations that have um, approved this data for sharing for anybody. So I can, here's, here's a, a, a German open data portal uh, based on um, ArcGIS. Um, they've made their data uh, available uh, for Germany. Here's a European one, and you can browse for data sets, transportation, energy, in different categories, and download that or access those as services and use them. So I did this. I downloaded two data sets. And here they are. One is uh, Christmas markets. These are all these Christmas shops that are around Berlin. And then um, Berlin wireless hotspots, right? So here's my map. Let me go back here. And here's my data. So these are just spreadsheets, right? So if I take these and put them on my map, I can see the spatial context of all these Christmas markets. Doesn't look right, quite useful here, but what I want to do is visually see proximity analysis, and I can see hotspots of where most of these Christmas markets are close, closer together. This is where the shopping's going to happen, right, in a couple months. So now I have that as a data layer in my online map, okay? Um, what else did I have? I had uh, wireless um, hotspots right here. I'm going to overlay those on my hotspot map, right? And here, I'm not going to do uh, proximity type of analysis, visual analysis. I'm going to do um, sort of a uh, unique value rendering or unique value styling. So now by uh, provider of those wireless networks, right, I can see who the provider companies are. And I can see in red, um, this particular one is, is really close to um, where the hotspots are, most of the Christmas stores are. So I can say, oh, these are probably going to be, you know, pretty busy uh, networks uh, around Christmas time. Um, a cool thing is, now I've just created a map without really writing any code or anything, and I didn't pay for any data, but I got it through an open data portal, and I, I can save it in my map. So this is ArcGIS Online, and with my free developer subscription, I have access to this, right? So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to call it... Um, Cute World Summit. And I'll put it a tag there so I can search for it.
I guess I can't do that. I'm not sure why I can't do that, but here I'll add a tag here. And save that. Okay, so I've saved it, but I haven't really shared it to anybody but myself. So I can go here and, and make it public. So I have this map that I've created. Now I want, as a Qt developer, I want to be able to open that map right in my application. So let's do that. So I have a sample here in our sample viewer, um, which allows me to search by keyword. So if I, if I search for Qt World Summit, will I find it? Nope, I didn't because I couldn't type it in to my map. Let's try that one more time. I'm going to uh, save as Cute World Summit copy. I'm going to say Cute World Summit. I'll do the same thing. Copy. Sorry about this. I'll say Cute World Summit. The keywords might be being. Um, being sought by uh, the tags. Let's try that. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> so if I select that, then this is a pure C++ cute application uh, that I've created that map, and, and now I can get the same effect, right, and share my spatial analytics with, with other folks. Uh, let's go to another example. Let's say, um, uh, let's look for, here is uh, some visual analysis uh, across a terrain, okay? So if I press and hold here, and I'm going to stand right here in Paris, I can see whatever's in green I can see, and whatever's in red I can't. So this is pretty uh, powerful for maybe surveillance or for um, uh, various uh, secret service or agent organizations that are going to need to have uh, special security for events and things like that. Um, what else? Here's some open data that is a GORSS feed. And it's uh, the earthquakes from the USGS um, and the earthquakes aren't coming in. Oh, there's some. There's a few right here. Oh, there are the, there are the rest of them. So these are symbolized by magnitude. Um, and uh, again, visually, I don't need to really do anything other than plot them on the map to answer questions about where these things are and why. So, of course, right along the west coast of um, the United States is 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 a, a, a boundary, right? It's a, a it's a boundary of a plate, so there's lots of tectonics going on there, and so we can actually answer the question, oh, okay, we know why this is happening. And you can also touch on each of those items and um, get the pop-up. So this is also in Qt C++. You can also build this in QML. Okay, I'll go back to the, those are just a few examples, right? Start the presentation over. Okay. So what's what's another way that we implement uh, spatial analysis? Well, we we can perform geometric operations, and these are um, computations that happen spatially between ge geometric objects, right? Whether they're points, lines, polygons. Here's an example where. Um, well, first of all, before I show the example, um, they determine relationships. You can determine distances between geometries, and you can derive new data from um, operations such as union or intersect, right? So you take these things and create new new data, and they answer questions. You know, how many? You know, what what's the field crop type in this particular um, area? And that's all I want to see. I want to clip everything to that. 
You can also use a geometry engine to um, change coordinate systems or change the spatial reference of these different geometric objects um, to bring um, things into transient different CS uh, coordinate um, spatial reference, right? And these operators can happen in memory, so they can be very, very fast, right? And uh, uh, they're, they're, they're very commonly used when you're trying to do buffer point polygon. Where is this in relationship to that? Right, so let me find um, my example for that. Let's go to, and this is our sample viewer, by the way, um, that comes with the SDK, so it's free. So it, it, it runs the um, various samples, and then you can see the code behind as well. Um, so let's look at some of these spatial operators. So here are two geometries here, and if I want to just calculate the intersection of these, the red is highlighted, that's the, that's the, um, that's the outcome of that particular um, operation. Here's a union, it combines um, those shapes together, and then, um, yeah, you combine the extents of each of those shapes together to create another extent, things like that. You can also take geometry and simplify it. So if you've got geometries that are are pretty complex, have lots of vertices and things like that. You can simplify them and, and make uh, new geometries. You can also densify too if you want more accuracy, things like that. Uh, let's see, here's another one of my um, favorites that my friend put together for me. Um, you can do point in polygon uh, operations. So here's an application that has a region that um, specified here as a block area in a parking lot. And that car just went through that into that space. So now it knows that we all know in our application knows that that points inside that polygon. But we can also get um, uh, alerts back when that feature leaves uh, that polygon. So you can have some spatial intelligence in your applications to figure out point polygon geofence um, type um, systems, right? A couple of examples. All right, so we, I think we're pretty familiar all here with uh, spatial analytics that happen over um, networks, primarily street networks, right? Because if you're doing uh, a lot of the um, computer automated uh, navigation systems in vehicles, uh, these, these are important. But they're not just important just in cars, right? You do network analysis across many different types of connected um, um, topological surfaces, right? Whether they're, uh, you know, a sewer line or whether it's utility, um, things like that. But um, um, they work off of, a lot of these operators really work off of these um, highly scientific complex uh, data sets called network data sets. And they, they have tables that know the connectivity between point A, point B, through this intersection, this intersection. They also know at any given time of the day, you know, how much traffic is over here. What's the impedance of this particular um, uh, type of segment, line segment? And the ArcGIS platform creates these, uh, tunes them, and um, modifies them to work um, for various for various applications. So um, you can calculate network cost, right, over time and distance. You can calculate what the slope is. Um, so what's the, you know, of traffic, you know, what's, this, what's the speed limit for all these different parts of the street network. You can also determine barriers. Where's the barrier? Where's the break line in the water flow um, of this water system? And what customers down the way are gonna be affected by that, um, by that breakage in the water line? or where's the point of pollution, right? So there's different, different patterns based, uh, available to you for analyzing data across a network depending on what it is you wanna do. Um, so let's look at a, a few examples there. So let's say I've got in Berlin all the restaurants that I would be interested in going to, right? Um, but I'm here, and I'm not sure which one's closer, but I'm really hungry. 
So if I'm right here, who's closest? So this is um, figuring out, you know, kind of a, a nearest, but not as a crow flies, but where I can get to from that transportation uh, network and then get the directions on how I can get there. Um, or I could say, here are all the restaurants in Berlin. Um, and I'm here. Where can I get to in 10 minutes? So this is actually going out to a, a web service to do the analytics. And what you see in these uh, blue areas are where, where you can get to one of these restaurants within a 10 minute drive. So if I'm really hungry, but I'm over here, uh, I got more than 10 minutes to go, right? So there, that's just yet another way to do analytics across a network. And you can change this to, you know, three, five, 10 minute drive times or accessibility. You know, what can I get to from this, this type of a road and not these other types? Um, networks are also um, within buildings, right? So if we uh, want to do some indoor routing, you know, we'd often need a way to do that. Um, here's the Esri campus in uh, Redlands, California. Let me put some transparency here. So here's the buildings, but we have a transportation network to get from certain building to certain building, right? So um, if I'm on M1 North Atrium, which is a meeting room where we always uh, usually um, start off in, and then M3 North Conference Room, um, I can start to navigate right through and go upstairs from floor to floor. Um, if I don't want to follow it, I'll just kind of manually follow this guy. And he'll zip up the stairs pretty quick, right? I'm not sure why that is. But anyway, he'll eventually come up to the third floor and make it over here. So you can do this 2D, 3D, what have you. Okay, network analysis. Um, another way that we can do some fine-grained, heavy-duty, uh, highly scientific spatial analysis is by making an asynchronous call, so to speak, to offload um, this, this calculation to a process. This would be called geoprocessing. And often, um, you'll take data that is pretty massive, and you'll want to process it with other data to derive a new data set that can then be used to channel back into um, another data model that you want to execute. And uh, we have Qt APIs to actually work with this and access um, this kind of uh, spatial analytics and processing as well. You can also think of this as automating um, your uh, chained um, uh, processing algorithms that maybe you've written in uh, Python and you want to um, execute those from an engine uh, that that Qt can access. Well, you can do that with this API. Um, there are um, out of the box with ArcGIS for um, building applications with our Qt SDK. There are over 350 different tools and and you can, I don't know if you can think of that many types of, of spatial analysis, um, but there, there are that many. There's some things that most people probably would never use. It goes beyond buffer, um, things like that. It, there's data conversion tools that take data from one place and convert it to a new format, from raster to vector. Um, um, you, can, you can see this on our developers.arcgis.com page. Network analysis tools that go just beyond um, uh, point to point but help um, do vehicle routing problem solving as well. So there are a ton of these um, uh, tools to be used within your Qt applications. Um, what are some of these examples? These would be long, not necessarily long running, but processes that may take three, four, five seconds, right? Or they could take, you know, 20, 30 seconds. Uh, but they would be like really, 
calculating optimal paths over maybe many different scenarios to give you back all of those scenarios all at once. Um, you can use these, these are often used for a wildfire prediction, where the wildfire is going to go next, because the input is how dry this land is, what the vegetative state is of that, and you can do predictive analytics on where, this, where these fires are going to travel, right? Um, you can find uh, patterns in crime location. So I was uh, with the Honolulu PD years ago, and they were having a rash of that back in the 90s at a time of where a number of they were getting a significant number of uh, rental car thefts. And so people would come and try to enjoy a vacation in Hawaii, in Honolulu, and they were getting their cars stolen, right? And this was really hurting, um, uh, this was really hurting business. So what they did was they took, um, they took all of the data and geolocated all the data of where the thefts happened, where they were reported, and where those cars ended up being found, because it's an island, right? You can't go very far. You're eventually going to find these cars. And by plotting those um, incident locations, they were able to see patterns. So they saw a, a, a common place where car thefts were, were being handled, where they were taking place, and where these cars were being um, uh, uh, found, right? Where they were uh, recovered. And they thought, well, most criminals go back to the scene of the crime. So they knew where to stake out and watch for these, um, um, these thieves, and they actually decreased um, that, those incidents of um, theft stolen. So they use spatial analysis and spatial tools to figure out where these crimes are going to take place again, right, predicting. Um, and all kind, these are just, just, a, just a subset of the different scenarios where you would use geoprocessing. And I just have one of those demos here. Let's say analysis hotspots. So there's a, a, there is a web service that I can access that will take time periods and give me all back all the crimes that have happened in that time period and where the hotspots are and the frequency of where these crimes during that time period are. So this is like... Um, January 1st, 1998 to the 31st. This is in Redlands. Fortunately, it was long ago. We don't really have this kind of uh, crime situation. Hopefully, not anymore in Redlands. But it's going out and, and talking to the web service and saying, here are the parameters, give me the crimes, and show me where they're most frequently happening. And, that's, that, and this, basically, I didn't really have to do too much on the client because the web service gave it back to me uh, with the analytical uh, results. So this is, this is like visualizing the results of those analytics. And this was a geoprocessing task that was happening on a back-end server. All right. So I mentioned analysis services really quick. Esri provides a number of highly tuned, highly scientific analytical uh, web services that, you, you can be, that could be accessed and used in your Qt applications. Um, and we can talk about more of those if you have questions. But um, just to summarize, um, spatial analytics is a vital dimension um, for making decisions that really matter, right? Help your business, help society, bless you. And, uh, you know, just, just help um, make the world more efficient, right? You as Qt developers uh, have all of these tools at your disposal to do these analytics, build them into your applications, and use them straight away. Um, and spatial analytics, because you're using this particular SDK, uh, ArcGIS can run on any platform, anywhere, in any condition, whether it's connected or disconnected, and on any device, right? So spatial analytics today can be leveraged uh, quickly and easily. I just want to give a quick sh plug again to the Esri Developer Summit that's going to happen here in this venue in two weeks. And uh, if you come to the desk today, I, I give you a discount that if you want to come for a day, you get a, a, a full day pass. Or if you want to come for the full um, week, I, I have a code that gives you a discount for the, for the I think it's just three days. Here are some quick resources um, that help you understand the power of spatial analytics. Um, and again, ArcGIS for developers is where you would want to go to investigate um, these geospatial tools and, and mapping tools for Q, QML developers. Um, 
Pricing is also on this site. If, you, if you're interested in the business model, you can find out. But as developers, you can get these tools without paying anything. You just get them and start using them, right? Um, and if you, I, I do have a, a code that allows you to sign up within the next week and you get extra bells and whistles with that free dev and test subscription. So thank you. I hope we have time for questions. I heard a, a bell going on. Is that, does that mean I was way over? Oh, great. All right. I want to say it was a privilege for me to be here to talk to you about this, and I thank you for your attention and your time. Thank you.